everybody, this is Borna Kazerani. I'm talking to you from Melbourne, Australia. Uh, I hope you're doing fine, at least trying your best. I know it's such a crazy circumstances right now on this beautiful planet. Anyways, uh, tonight I want to talk to one of the successful and creative artists here in Australia, George Hall. Uh, George studied drawing and designing as well as working in the textile industry. He lectured in designing and illustration at various designing colleges. Uh, he's an active mentor and teacher to emerging artists in e-commerce for creatives. George's successes and rise to acclaim has been very much for the result of his relentless tension to social media. Uh, to an artist, George has worked in the leading position in large fashion and textile businesses through Australia, tr throughout Australia and New Zealand. Um, he understands that to be a successful artist, it's imperative to be on top of business trends to keeping afloat and most importantly, to have the finances to keep creating at a top level. George owns and operates a very successful gallery in the middle of Post Point, Sydney, in Australia. He has a large clientele of architects and interior designers. He frequently works on film and television projects. Um, that was a little bit of a George Hall biography. And now I'm going to ask George to join me and have a conversation with him. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you doing, George? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. I'm glad to see you here. I love oh. your background. So before I'm going to start, would you like to say hi to everybody here on Instagram? Hi, everybody on Instagram. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me yeah. how you're doing in such a crazy circumstances on this beautiful planet. Apparently, you've been very creative and proactive at your studio. Tell me about that. Oh, well, during this time, I've been I've really, I've actually been quite busy. Like I've had, um, with the whole, you know, Corona thing going on, I've had quite a lot of interest through my social media. And so I thought I'd really sort of build that up a bit more and do some tuitions and just mix it up a bit. So I've um, been doing tuitions and I've been doing more on my Instagram and I'm trying to start a YouTube, but it's not happening that quickly. Uh, but I've just, I've just been working a lot on my, just trying some new stuff in the studio, you know, things that I've, it's actually been, I mean, it's a terrible time, but it's a time where I've been able to sort of slow down a bit and, and, and do some things that I wouldn't, I've been thinking about doing for ages and, um, just mixing it up a bit, just trying some new stuff that, cause in this head of mine, there's so much going on. I don't get time to put it all down. And so oh. I, at this time, I've had time to do some stuff I've really loved. So it's, it's, it's been a, it's a hard time, but it, in some ways, I think that maybe I'm making the best of it. And I yeah. hope that other people are doing it too. Yeah. What about yeah. you? Well, I've been mean, fine since I started doing this live show on Instagram. Let me just uh, put the volume down a little bit. Since I'm I started to... doing the live show on Instagram, actually, um, I'm so glad I started doing this because it makes me extremely busy and creative. And since I get up very early in the morning, I started like confirming with different artists um, everywhere in the world and, uh, you know, writing the question that I'm interested to ask. Um, yeah. Uh, ask those who I'm going to have them on here and uh, like on, on my um, live show. Um, I was reading your biography, and your bio is very impressive. And also, I've noticed you studied drawing and designing, as well as working in the tech, uh, textile industry. Uh, what are you doing is more painting or paint and uh, creating art on canvas? Is that, I do what the... you, is that what you enjoy the most these days? Or you're also working in the fashion industry as well? What are you doing? I don't do any fashion. No, as you can see, 
I don't do fashion anymore. Well, I, I've been trying to be a little bit fashionable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're more fashionable than me. I, I, when I was younger, I was very, very into fashion. I was, I mean, we had fashion businesses and, you know, in New Zealand, we had, um, yeah, fashion. And I, and I used to design the textiles, but I also did the garments. So I can sew and I can make patterns and I can do all that stuff, which I loved for years. I loved Create, creating clothes because I, could, I was young and I could wear them, but now I'm not so young, so I kind of, I'm not so, I, I mean, I buy things from Target and Kmart. So what are you doing nowadays? You're more, more, oh, more na Nowadays, on I'm painting, I, completely painting. And I also do some, I draw on my iPad. So I do some digital stuff as well as the painting and a bit of photography and I, I mix it all up. Sometimes I, I print the, I do a digital, and I print the background of a, of a work, and then I paint over the top of it. So it's a, a mixture, because a lot of my work is mixed media. So, you know, I do, sometimes I dye the backgrounds, and then I stretch the canvas, and then I'll screen print a little bit on, you know, like this one here has little bits of screen printing on it. And, and then I'll, and then I've also got these special paint markers that I use as well that give me a lovely sort of flow and and without having to dab 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 the paintbrush the whole time so I do a real I really love doing a real mixture I mean a lot of my work incorporates a fair amount of drawing as well so with these pens I can draw things in little details in and yeah I just I, you know anything that will give me the results that I want I don't design textiles anymore you know, I more, tend to do more things for, um, because I was over it. I worked in the fashion industry for 30 odd years. And I, this is just when the internet happened. So when the internet became more available to everybody, I could, I realized I put some stuff up on Facebook. A friend said, cause she'd seen my work. Cause I, I, you know, I've always done things on the site, you know, painted and even when I was designing textiles and there's a lot of paintings in my house and she said, you've got to put these on Facebook. And I was like, no, oh, really? Mm. So I did. And I sold out of six of them, I sold three of them. So I realized at that point that there was, you know, there was something in this. So that's why I, I'm, I'm in passion. If I'd been able to be an artist creating artworks, like two dimensional artworks to be on the walls for interiors and stuff, right from the beginning, I would have done that. But when, when I was younger, there wasn't the internet. We didn't have the audience. So now we've got the, you don't just, I don't even go on other people. I, mean, I sell in a couple of other galleries, but generally I don't because the internet is the biggest audience and it's where you get the most attention. So mm -hmm. doing that has enabled me to do this. Exactly. Yeah. And I know, actually, I know there are lots of people here still in the world who are an artist, excellent artist, and they cannot make a great um, connection, actually. You know, yeah. they prefer to work in the like old fashioned style rather than just yeah. start updating themselves. How and how did you start to make yourself become familiar, actually, with technology stuff? You had to. Well, because I was designed. Sorry? You had to. Because I was designing textiles, I had to, for large companies, I had to, and then I was managing other designers, I had to be pretty equipped with the, the computer side of it. So all, you know, like Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign and all the things that graphic designers use, I could do. And then right. the beginnings and websites, like at the beginning, to be able to start a website or to be able to, you know, to keep... Um, upkeep on a website. I can do all that stuff myself. So I'm really lucky as an artist. Well, I'm not, I don't know if I'm lucky, but I've, I've worked, worked with all the technology. And so now I can use all the technology and I really enjoy the technology. A lot of artists, I've got friends who are amazing, fantastic artists, but they can't do the technology and they can't pay for somebody else to do the technology. Because it does take time, you know, as you know, you know, with your work, that technology is, is a big part of what we do. Oh. And um, huge, huge amount. I mean, I spend half, if not more, of my time with the technology than I do actually painting. You know, once I do a painting, I need to put it up onto 
three different websites and got two international galleries and, and put it on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and Pinterest. And, you know, you, you, it just spends so much time doing that. I, I'm lucky I can do it myself. I, really lucky. Yeah, really, and I really think really. it's a very good time for those because they, everyone's got lots of free time. So they can start like probably improving skills, yeah. updating themselves yeah. you know, and study more rather just rather than just like working or creating, they can just study more and start learning actually how to use the technology in the way to make uh, the progress actually regarding of their job. So as a filmmaker, uh, I'm very interested to know what you've done in the film and television industry. Tell me a bit about that, yeah. When I was younger, when we were, when we were just finished design school, um, yeah. university, we did a lot of commercial, um, advertising in in New Zealand, you know, the wall board. We used to get these quite large contracts for the wall board to do all stills and films for TV. And then later on, when I started being an artist, I got approached to do a Johnny Walker ad. And so I did, I don't know if you've seen it, it's called um, Keep Walking and it's about an artist. And they asked me, so I, I did the art direction for the artist side of it. And I paint, I did all the paintings and everything for that. And then I got um, a, a, another TV series that hasn't been, I've, I've done quite a few that are in the, in the process at the moment. I've done a, um, just recently did a Disney film, a, um, one for, um, it's a, it's a um, Japanese film. It's a, it's, I've done, I it's did like fitted out a whole. Film, so is, that, is that like an independent movie or is that like a, big production in Hollywood? Well, the Disney's a big production one. Yeah. The other one's a TV for Channel 7 and, and Channel 9. And, and so I supply the artworks. And what I do basically now is if they need a special work done, then I can do the special, paint the special work. It's generally in my style because they come to me because they, they like my style. Or I lend them my works and I use that... And I've just done another a one called Back to the Rafters and there's an artist and I've supplied all his artwork and um, that, he, that he's, he's basically me. So that's what I do in film and, and TV. But I, yeah, okay. I've done things over the years. Yeah. Well, well done. Yeah. Well, but bright. lately I've done a lot. Yeah. Sorry? So when you started your career as an artist almost more than 30 years ago, so there were far like fewer opportunities to create uh, works of art. My question for you is, do, uh, do you think an artist can be even more creative in such a limited situation? In, in now pre prepared to then? Yeah. Yeah. I think it was better then, to be honest. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Well, we're not, look, I mean, I'm, I'm nearly 60. So back in, the, back in the late 70s and 80s, as creatives, we were trusted more. You know, we were, we, we, people came to us and they, and they listened to us. Whereas now there's so much more for them to look at that they've got, everyone seems to have their input. Whereas in the old days, we could dictate pretty much what we did and what the brief was. We'd get a brief, you know, you know, for a commercial or something, or or in fashion or textiles and something, and that they'd say, come up with something in a blue story or a, you know. Whereas, what happened in the fashion industry was that everybody started copying everybody, and yeah. what I used to get was I used to get I used to go overseas to to Spain and 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 to Italy and to France and to the UK and to America. And I just bought, we just buy all these samples, fabrics, and then would come back and I would recolor them and put them to work or get other designers to do that. It was basically copying. It was to just become such plagiarism. But back in the 70s and the 80s, we created it from scratch because the internet didn't exist. So we had to make, we had to make our stuff and, and, and make new things. I actually miss those times. I mean, those times were really, really creative. That's why I left. Um, working in large companies was because now I can do this and that's completely from me. I haven't copied it. I've done it from my head. I haven't, I've had influences, but 
back then, if we had the technology back then that we had and we had the, the um, attitude, because the attitude back then was very much, you know, believe in the creatives. Now it seems to be, oh, he's creative, he's a bit weird, uh, we'll work around him and he'll come back to our way. Do you know, do you know what I mean? In addition to what you're saying, actually, I believe the competition is extremely high also. And every yes. single person here thinks like, I'm the unique one. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, let's, you know, help each other towards the same goal. That is my belief. Yeah. Yes. And they don't. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. A lot of this stuff is done on computer. I love computers, but a lot of this... I mean, I think that free drawing and doing all that sort of lovely stuff is missed. And handwriting, you know, like kids now don't have beautiful handwriting, whereas in my day you had to have beautiful handwriting to be an artist. You know, all that sort of, all those things, those little things are not, people do, if people, kids tend to do everything on the computer now. And I, I think they miss that sort of, that spontaneous stuff that's really lovely. You know, that just experimenting and letting yourself fail and, and just, you know, and you come up with some really gorgeous results from that. Whereas now they've got a computer and they, they rub it all out or they do a new thing. And Very you know, pure. Sorry? It's Very pure. pure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I think. Well, and also I was reading, you know, I, I, you know, I've been through your profile, reading the comments. I was trying to get a sense of people and um, you got, you, I love you, I love your artwork. And it seems you're a very positive person, you know, and, uh, and also you mentioned, uh, you mentioned it in the text that uh, like you sent it me through your biography. What what does or what you usually what usually inspires you to create a like a art? What inspires you usually? Oh, everything. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh absolutely everything. I I walk around the streets. I mean, uh, I should be crazy. I am, but crazy because the oh, everything oh, I see. Oh. Yeah, yeah, we are. <laughs> but it's, you know, the shadow in a window. Like, I mean, I'm watching TV and I'm looking in the background and I'm seeing these lovely sort of landscapey, sort of blurry effects. And I'm, I'm constantly, I mean, I'm, I've always been a vis visual person. I just look the whole time. I see even, even the movement of somebody's face or the, what they're wearing or, you know, just, just landscapes everything the ripped piece of paper on the floor that's crossing over yellow lines or you know just anything that's got color and movement and shade and and tonal stuff i i i see that whereas i, I don't think everyone does see that i used to think everybody saw how i i saw but they don't i i, I just you know i look at i look at the shadow underneath a, a balcony and i think oh i really like the angle that that shadow is going on and and you know what if you put a line through it and I just always put in these other I don't know if that, that's from years of being a designer that I just look at every I look at every 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 visual as an opportunity right everything visual even looking yeah even looking in the background and and I can see the shelves in the back of your behind you and, and the red flower I, I mean I notice all those things and I yeah <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> And, and that's, that's what inspires me. I also really get inspired by things that make people feel good. Yeah, I, I believe art, like I'm an artist myself, you know that. So I, yeah. I believe art has got a different visions towards things in comparison or comparing to like, like others. That's what I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. I've only sort of in the last five years realized that other people don't see like that. Mm -mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Abs no, I want to ask you a favor. As we confirmed previously, I want you to get up and take your camera with you. Show me around a little bit. Like to show you your working at and um, show me you that you're watching us, please. And well, also choose one of your, sorry, and choose one of your 
our favorite works and you can yeah. press there there is a camera you can press on it and it's reverse it and you can show the round okay so i'm going to reverse the camera now right yeah okay reversing yeah okay yeah. right so at the moment i'm working on this painting which is it's kind of a landscape it's actually upside down i just noticed but okay, okay. i'm just showing you i've just sold this piece Right. Oh, wow. That one's got too much glare on it, but that's I do these. I love doing these hearts, so they have a lot of the backgrounds printed, and then there's squiggles all over the top. Can you see? So yeah, yeah, yeah. If you step back a little bit and tell me about what that is, or uh, it's a heart. It's a heart. It's actually not. You can't see how bright it is. It's it's called the optimist. So to me, a heart is being optimistic about, and all the words, all the texts in the background, all the texts are positive words. Oh, wow. So compassion, um, what have we got? Kind, good, generosity. I mean, they've all got, yeah, and then I've painted over the top of that. Oh, wow. So, yeah. It's like it's 3D. Yeah, well, that's what I, it does create that effect. Yeah, wow. and then there's this big one here. It is is it is a seascape. So, and it's very got very. I do this with towels, so it's very sort of textural. You can see all the texture in that from wow. the towels. So that creates. That's from my textile background. So I do that wow. so that it graduates from light to dark. I don't know if it, can you see that very well? That's very interesting. Can you turn to shift your lens towards that purple one? Which purple the, one? The other way. The one on the other one. The one on the one. Yes. This one, does it look purple? This is a really large, this is a very, very largest one. It's one, 190 by 110. And oh, it's actually oh. all black and white. So they're all the squiggles. And it's, it's an abstract version. You know how when all those birds fly up, you know, and they create shapes and stuff? I've always yeah. really, really loved that. And I wanted to do, you know, I wanted to do a work that looked like that. So there's just, uh, it's just uh, all different, all different size strokes and... Wow. And then this one here is a is a landscape of New Zealand. Yeah, that's also quite big. And then I do all these. Li I do little little tester ones. There's a you can see the wine glasses where the that's where the studio, that's when we have openings and things. I've got there's actually a whole bar behind. This was an old restaurant. <laughs> so I've got an old restaurant. I've got a whole industrial kitchen out the back here which i wow. use for storage and everything but then i've also got a whole gallery this whole ga oh, it's a mess at the moment i'm sorry oh my I god i want to see it i want to see it please this is but it's it's a bit messy at the moment but because i because i haven't tidied it up i'm sorry if i'd known you were going to look perfect and then that's king's cross out there the, <laughs> The Coke say, sign is to my um, right. So it's like, do you want me to go outside and show you from outside? No, 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 no. <laughs> what you're doing now is perfect. Perfect. I can see everything. Yeah, so it's quite a big gallery. I still, I have an upstairs as well. It's a huge space. Huge, monstrous. There is Monst another, oh, oh, what is that? What is that one? What is that one? The colorful one, yes. That one's one I've just done. Um, and it is an abstract, what, oh my God, I forgot what I called it. Um, but it's very, like, it's got a lot of different colored details in it. And it's, I'm really happy with this one. I almost wanted to take it home myself. That's, that's amazing. And there's this little one down here. It's just a little, 
little one. The lighting's not very good. Wow. Yeah. And then there's these these black and white these these ones, which is a series of three. This one, two, three. I do a lot of prints that are series. I like them to go together because it's nice to have mm -hmm. them on a wall where there's a you know like these two little ones down. Well, they're not that little, but they're down there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's... There is another painting, if it goes straight through, on the right side. No, 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 not there. Not the, right. uh, the, other, the other side. Uh, the other way around. That green not one. Not in the gallery, in this... your workshop. In my workshop, yes. is another painting. And Where? On your right, or left. That, no, 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 the other, yes, 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 no, no, the other, the other way around. <laughs> there is a purple one, I want to get close to it, please. There, yes, in the that back, one. Yes, in the bushes, what is that one? That's is called one? Um, free, freehand rhythm. Wow, I There's really a big love table the combination here. of the color you use on this painting, actually. It's not purple, it's blue. It's blue, Does okay. it look purple on your screen? It's very blue. It's, um, it's got different, different colors of blue in it. So it's got, oh, wow. see, they're actually blue. So it's got blue and, and black and um, light blue. Wow. And somebody just put a heart. Yeah, I really like this one too. This is, is that's, sort of, that's yeah. absolutely a lovely one. All right, I don't want to make you tired. You can go back and see, and that was amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so I turn the camera around again. I turn yes, that? please. <laughs> and oh, what, is that, what, what is that one? Before you turn it around, what is the one yeah, yeah. behind the chair on, on the wall? That one? No, 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 no. Where you were sitting, when you were sitting, there is an orange one. This one? Yes. This, that one? Yes. Oh, God, I can't get the angle right. It's called The Movers and the Shakers. Okay. It's about us at, at, in Oxford Street in the 90s, being wow. naughty, dancing oh. and... All right. Yeah. All right. right, okay. Thank you so very much. It was an amazing uh, tour. And I really, really if I'd known that you, uh -huh. if I'd known that you wanted a tour, I would have, I would have tried to make it more, a bit more beautiful. I like to surprise my guests. Don't worry, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, yes, I don't want to be everything looks like clean and tidy. No, because there's, there's no point. I like to like you know like let like chit chat conversation and yeah. showing this or there a little bit to the audiences. Yeah. Tell me, um, because I was talking to um, Michelle Pike, another guest uh, I had another day, actually, who is an excellent and professional um, designer and illustrator. I want to ask yeah. the same question um, as I asked her, actually, on that show. So uh, you lecturate in designing and uh, you, you lecturate in designing and illustration at various uh, uh, designing colleges. So what types those... in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and tell me, so what are those important things that you usually tell those who want to become someone like you? What uh, do they need to know before anything else? Learn to use the computer. Now, I mean, if, if you want to, it's Okay, it's about presentation. Make your work look beautiful, frame it beautifully, give it borders, allow your work to breathe. Don't cram everything in. Always allow your work to have space around it so that people can enjoy it rather than being confused with what else is there. And also another thing I, I like to say, people learn to draw. Always learn to draw. You're not going to be, you're not going to be Leonardo da Vinci to start with. You know, some of my drawings are really quite, you know, average. But you need to draw. 
drawing is a good thing to draw and draw and just keep drawing. That's because you learn balance, you learn the thickness and thinness of, of, of line, how important that is. You know, those things, be, learn to draw and learn to use the computer. Just learn a little bit of Photoshop because those are the tools now that you really need to be a, a successful artist because it all comes from what the images are that, people, that you put out there. I know some fantastic artists who can't, who are not seen. I know some not so fantastic artists who are really good at, at, at presentation and, 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 and they sell more, you know? It's, if you want to survive, I mean, art shouldn't always be about, you know, making money. It should, I, for me, if I was going to make money, I wouldn't be doing art because I'm not going to be rich. Well, I might, you know, I don't know. But, but you've got to earn money to be able to, to finance what you're doing. So, you know, give and take a bit. Do some things that are, you know, are beautifully presented, that are allowed to breathe, and um, people will enjoy that. And, and, and work that makes people feel good. Well, you know, that was, I, I agree with you at some stage, but you know, in, even in the film industry, I've experienced that I've encountered with lots of people who want to become an actress or actor in the industry. Yeah. Uh, it's very easy for me as a filmmaker who's been working in this industry for years to, to see if that person is talented or not. Because some people take themselves um, extremely serious and they believe like they, they're giving themselves lots of credit, you know, and but they're not really talented. Now, if I want to back to you, so when you see somebody who wants to become a professional artist, like per, per professional um, painter or artist or uh, etc., you can't see it. It's not all about practicing. To become, you, but you have to have a talent, uh, you know, first. Then you can work on that talent or skills. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I totally agree with you. And the talented ones will move to the front. You know, the talented ones will move to the front. The ones that aren't so talented, maybe they're going to be good at doing websites or they're going to be good at doing the more production side of mm -hmm. the work mm -hmm. because they have an incredible interest in it and they may not end up being, in your case, the actor or, or director or whatever. And that is the same with art. You know, the ones that might, they may end up, you know, running a successful gallery or, or doing that sort of stuff because they're not actually the talent. But you know the That's saying, you, you know the saying that, you know the saying that um, hard work beats talent with no work you know there is with I, I do with kids like young young people I always say if you work hard it puts you in a position where the good luck will find you the good luck may not be the good luck that you want you you thought but it's the good luck that you need so mm -hmm. learning skills and doing all those things I never discovered I get so many people on Instagram they they bombard me with questions of how to do this and how to do that and just, you know and, and and I say go to Google. Google will teach you what you need to know. You know what I mean? People aren't prepared not to always, investigate. But yeah. But so, that, that not always, but yeah, but in most of the time Google can be a good source to find probably the yeah. basic information you need. Yeah. That's, that's, I agree. That's, yeah. I mean, that you said it better than I did. I, um, I agree. But talent, talent, like my daughter, I have a daughter who's 18 and she's talented. She can do it. You know, like she's lucky. She has a dad and a mum. like her mother doesn't, her mother has a, is in a partnership with a woman and, and I'm her dad, but she's, she's very talented. She's, yeah, so she's, she's lucky in that respect, but I don't think she wants to be an artist. She wants to be an architect. So you know, there's so many things that people can do nowadays if they don't succeed at being an artist. A lot of people want to be the artist, you know, and that's, that's, that's not always gonna happen like that. No, but if you no, can learn, yeah. 
If you can learn skills that help you progress along a creative, not all creatives are talented. Some it's are like, really good. No, I, agree, I actually agree with you because in film industry, so like, um, you know, I've, I've, I've seen so many people like, they wanted to become a filmmaker, professional filmmaker, but when I told them like, you have to start to making a film, like a short movie first, they always want to be the star, you know what I mean? They don't want to start from just like, start making a minute movie, two minutes films. Even it's more difficult to make in the, like a two minutes movie uh, com in comparison or comparing to like a full length uh, film for cinema. Yeah. But um, the younger generation unfortunately want to become like be, be star. Yeah, but they, unfortunately, they, they learn by their mistake. They learn by failing. They learn mm -hmm. that, you know, they learn that they're not going to be able to make that full length movie without doing some training. So it's actually good that they fail to start with and then they get beaten back and they have to go back and do some training and learn how to do it. And then maybe they'll end up being a production designer or, or something like that, but they may not be the director or they may be the director. You know, it, it, it sorts people out, doesn't it? Do you think it just sorts them, you know, when they... I'm very up, I'm very upfront person and so, sometimes it hurts uh, people, but I prefer to be honest and upfront. If I don't see someone is not, if I don't see talent with somebody who believes that's like, he's a very talented person, I'm very honest with that person. I said, well, you would better find something else rather than just wasting your time. Because, you know, it's better. I prefer that person gets hurt there than like in 20 years later. And, you know, and then keep failing in what he wants or what she wants to do. You know, because what's the point to encouraging those who are not talented? You know, this is really a problem. And social media gives them lots of um, incorrect encouragement or support. You know, they get the wrong idea. You know, yeah, right. From, from that, this is this is what I believe. So, George, it was such a lovely chatting with you, and thank you yeah, very too. much for this lovely conversation. And before we are going to wrap up this conversation, do you want to say something to those who are watching us now? Um, no, I've really enjoyed the conversation. I think that you know you've covered a lot of ground for me, and I'm really. Looking to looking forward to look looking back on it. I mean, it, it's it's. I've had a few interviews, but this has been a great one, and and I haven't got anything to add because I think I've done probably too much talking. <laughs> well, there are Can lots you not of, hear me? Yeah, there are lots of no, 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 no. I love I love that actually. This is one. Of, this was this conversation was one of the great uh, conversation that I've been experiencing through my show uh, live show here on Instagram. Uh, plus, you know, you made everybody happy because you started like uh, showing around and what you've done, you know, and what you've been doing in your gallery. There are heaps of questions, and unfortunately, I can't um, because there are lots of questions. If you are interested to find out more about George Hall, please go to uh, his um, social platforms like Instagram, or you can go actually to his website. So, um, so you like the conversation? Yeah. Did you did you enjoy, did you like the conversation? Yeah, I did. You're asking I, me, not the audience. No, no, no I'm asking you. <laughs> yeah, I did. I really enjoyed it. It was it's very easy, very easy to chat with you. Incredibly easy, and I really enjoyed it. And thank you so much for including me in this. It's very, thank very you. Kind I really appreciate that. It was lovely meeting you, and I'm gonna say goodbye to you. Okay, stay in touch. Talk All to right. Bye. 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 Thank you very, very much for uh, watching us. The conversation that I had um, was with George Hall. If you are interested to find out more about George, uh, please go to his uh, website or to his uh, Instagram page. Have a lovely night. Have a lovely day, evening. So uh, please look after yourself, staying at home. I know it's very difficult and um, love you all. And thank you very much for your support.